We're here today to talk about women, wealth, and giving with Margaret May Damon and Mary Quist Newens. Um, Mary is the State Farm Chair of Women in Financial Services, and Margaret is our guest today. She is the author of Women, Wealth, and Giving, a new book. The subtitle is A Virtuous Legacy of the Boom Generation. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who's a prospect for this kind of work and how to find them so that we can make a living at it. <laughs> would, would, would it be fair to say this is probably somebody who is at a stage in their career where they have more than they actually need for their own financial well-being. In other words, they've kind of reached the point where their consumption need is small enough they can begin to think beyond it. So they might have net worth of, oh, I don't know, let's say a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars. They got enough for themselves. They have enough for their kids, and they begin to think a little bit about what more there might be to life than that. Is that is that fair to say? Uh, yes, it is fair to say. In fact, I think that the profile of this woman and a man maybe too, a boom generation women and men, is someone who has come to success and has come to the table really bankrupt in spirit, mm. but you know, full in the pocketbook or full in the bank, but rich in their bank book and rich in their pocket. So you're looking at someone who has not had the time um, to go ahead and, and think about what, what is greater than themselves, what is greater than success. Where you find these women and men, especially women, because that's my market that I look at, I think there are several areas that you can look first of all at the professional organizations of those women that are giving right now of their time and their talent and some of their money. Whether it's Seroptimist, whether it's AAUW, whether it's the Women's uh, Federation of Clubs, whether it's the Women's Network of Attorneys, CPAs, the Women's Chamber of Commerce, all of these professional organizations that are women's networking, mm -hmm. um, social networking areas, even on the web. Uh, there are uh, women's chat groups now, women's mm -hmm. giving circles, mm -hmm. impact 100 women organizations that Wendy Steele started that are building up all over the country, where those women all give $1,000 or more right. a year. Right. To, uh, to have larger grants. There's, mm -hmm. Now, that's one side, that's the not-for-profit side. But in the professional side also, I say look at ugly duck professions. Because so many of us go after the glamour, the doctors, the attorneys, the lawyers. Mm -hmm. But if you look in your geographic area, what are the ugly duck businesses that are owned privately by women? In my area in Florida, mm -hmm. it's orange juice, citrus, and uh, sod. In Michigan, it may be car dealerships, but so many businesses are owned by entrepreneurial women. And the, are not, and the entrepreneurial women is the one who has the money, who understands finance, and has the ability to make the decisions for philanthropic areas. It's so important to be able to be specific and really carve your niche rather than just say, I want to specialize in philanthropic giving and women. You really have to chunk it down from what I'm hearing you say and go after specific organizations that are going to be maybe aligned with your own mm -hmm. passions. Mm -hmm. And aligned with the values of what society are and the fact that philanthropy really does engage the social, uh, ethical mores of our communities and what we're planning to do with our, with our money and our wealth and our time. So looking for where there is a, um, a cross-pollinization of those values very important and and it's out there women are the entire market right. no longer the niche right. well, I sort of play that back because I really agree with what you said I think it's really important there are, there are certainly women owned businesses and that's a beautiful market for anybody I mean that's a beautiful market because it's growing at twice the rate of <laughs> yeah. men owned businesses right. yeah. exactly but it's also I think true that many times it is the woman who's more receptive to the initial conversation about giving back the community making a difference in the lives of other people they they may both care about it but I think the women find it easier to talk about they're a little bit more accessible on that, on that topic so if you're trying to market philanthropy and you aren't involving women I can tell you for sure it's not going to work <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've been there if she's not involved in the philanthropic conversation she's not involved at all and it's not going to work. You know, I always say that there's a big disconnect between what happens in the boardroom and what happens in the bedroom, and it's, it's very true when it comes to philanthropy. The woman may not be speaking at the table, mm -hmm. but she certainly is chatting at the kitchen table right. when she goes home at night. Yeah, another, another little side angle on this, honestly. Um, very often in, in financial planning and estate planning, you're trying to get into a room that's already closed. In other words, they already have advisors and they, in your approach talk. Mm -hmm. They come back and say, well, you know, I've already got the best advisory team in town. We deal with the best attorneys. Very often, I think it's helpful if you turn to the woman and say, is your voice heard 
around the issues that matter That's to great you point. Yes, with your point. current advisory team, boy, there is a long silence after that one. And yeah. you sit back and wait for that to play out because you've demonstrated whether you're a man or woman, you're willing to have that conversation, it makes you very special. You know, and that's why the local organizations for the PPP, uh, Partnership for Philanthropic Planning, and AFP are so important for us to be involved in as financial advisors and as, a, as advisors of, of wealth because there you have uh, the attorneys and the accountants mm -hmm. and, the, and the other professional advisors you want to have alliances with right. that have similar values. Right. You've got to build your credibility yep. with them as and well. And your network. Yep. And your network. Right. I, think, I think the other point you've, you've both made, but it's implicit, I'm just going to underline it. A lot of times to find the philanthropist or the donor in the other person, you sort of have to find it in yourself or in your mm -hmm. own family, in your own marriage. So to the extent you're dealing with people who share your vision, share your values, you're comfortable with socially in the kind of networks you're describing, or in your church or a religious mm -hmm. association, mm -hmm. or the schools you associate with, things which are really important in your life and you care about them, you'll quickly find other people in the community do as well and their key donors could be your key prospects. And you know, if you ask the right questions and you listen, they're going to tell you their story and then you know exactly what it is they want to accomplish. And you're the broker right. in between. You have the knowledge. Right. Right. Yeah, oh. And as you were saying, you know, if it's uh, something that you share, and from a marketing perspective, I think this is really critical, uh -huh, that if it's a passion that you truly share, mm. it comes off as being sincere right. Right. rather than something that's manufactured. So right. I think exactly that, right. thank you for yeah. bringing that it's out. It's transformational yep. for right. both you exactly. and your client. Right. Exactly. No longer transaction. Then you're on the one one more table. closing question. We, I think we've dem demonstrated it could be profitable. Very <laughs> profitable. Yeah. Very profitable. Is it also enjoyable? Very enjoyable. I mean, I go, I wake up in the morning happy and I go to bed even happier knowing that I've accomplished something that is, is, feels good to me and I know it's helping my clients. It's all win-win. It's all win-win. Exactly right. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Phil.